Hey everybody, welcome to Geekaholics Anonymous episode 80. My name is Rico, I'm here with my co-host, Dane Cody. We get together once a week, talk about video games, TV, movies, toys, gadgets, technology, and all things geek, and whatever the hell we like. Um, though actually, I haven't really talked about movies too much lately. I've been really bad. I haven't been able to see many. I know. I am I wanted to go see Miss Peregrine's School for You Gifted Youngsters or whatever it was called. Uh, that looked really uh, cool, but I just never got around to it. I might go watch Jack Reacher. I think that's sequel. That's all right. Doctor Strange out. comes out soon, which oh, looks yeah, that's awesome. Right. Actually, that's what I should waste my money on that does look awesome i forgot that was a november title yeah man that's Let's not this and coming weekend freaking. that's next weekend then we're pretty much november yep. oh my god so dane what's up usually we uh talk about what we've been playing getting some news and then uh get into our free-for-all section um and sometimes we open up a little bonus section our dd section designated drinking section or what is Dane drinking section. I'm uh, changing it up a little bit tonight. Drinking a whiskey ginger. Little little whiskey, some bourbon mixed with some ginger ale. It's nice. Mm. Yeah. I can see that being pretty yummy. Yeah, exactly. As usual, I aim to disappoint and I'm drinking nothing. We're recording a little later than usual and I don't really like to drink this late at night because then it I have to wake up in the middle of the night and do stuff. You just got to drink more, so you just zonk out. What? Oh, yeah. I guess if you're drunk, you can't <laughs> There you go. Up. There you go. Hmm. That might work. See? <laughs> the problem is you're just not drinking enough, my friend. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> so, there was some major news last week. There was. So, I'm going to disrupt our order. Oh, boy. I'm going to get right to it. Um, and we're going to bump a little bit of news before what you've been playing. Um, Nintendo revealed the NX as the Nintendo Switch. Um, I tacked on a little bonus section at the end of the last episode for some quick initial impressions. Uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed that. Uh, sounded like some of you guys did. Um, but Dane fell asleep because he has a baby to take care of and he had to go to bed early. Dude, I had a five a. I had to get up at five a.m. the next morning because I had an early morning meeting. It's my fault. And we you were... were all like, "No, no, I got stuff." And I was like, "Okay, cool." I figured when we finished talking, it sounded like we would just do it the next day. <laughs> yeah, I was and having it, a rough like, time. Like a quarter to eleven, you were like, "No, hey man, are you available?" And I was like, "No." You didn't even respond. You were already. Met. I'm in bed. <laughs> and my yeah, like, yeah. I, I heard my phone go off, and I was like. I don't know what that is about, but I don't care because I'm asleep. <laughs> yeah, and then I got your message bad. in the morning, and I was like, "Really, really, man? My bad. We had a baby that was a little restless and <laughs> screwed up our thing, and you went to sleep." But anyway, I shared my <laughs> thoughts. So, Dane, what do you think of the Nintendo Switch? Uh, I don't like that. It's. Uh, I mean, it's it's kind of what we knew it was going to be, I guess. Like, the ru- yeah, like the, the rumors. rumors were all true. Yep, they were pretty spot on. Um, you know, not exact design-wise, but like rough I, sketches is pretty, it was pretty on the money. This one was hard for me because all I wanted was to know a lot more information than they gave. Like, this was, a, for all intents and purposes, a teaser. Yeah, um, teaser, trailer, concept. Yeah, like, like is it that felt final super, hardware? Yeah, it felt super concepty to me. Some blanks have been filled in. Nintendo has made some comments, um, not super specific stuff, but they've like answered some questions. Like people are like, "Oh, can 3DS games play in it?" Because during the trailer, you see a uh, little cartridge get pump uh, inserted in the top of the system, and people are like, "Oh, can it play 3DS?" And Nintendo's like, "Nope." Can it play Wii U games? They're like, "Nope." It's not backwards compatible at all. So they have least, said, said that. So it's a fresh with physical, start with physical media. So who knows what that means? It could be downloadable. I don't know. I doubt it. I think it would be pretty hard to do, considering 
the architecture of the system is going to be very different than everything else they've released. For starters, it's NVIDIA. Yeah, NVIDIA, NVIDIA did come out and say that they were involved and their Tegra chip is involved, but they didn't give, again, no specifics. They essentially <laughs> just said, hi, we're building the chip that's in that. It is a variation of one of our Tegra designs. Yeah. And it's running one of our GPUs. And, uh, and that's all we're going to tell you. The Wii U was ATI, if I remember correctly. I'm pretty sure. And the Wii U a- ATI based. Currently, every single console that's being sold, or I guess AMD, I should say, are all they all have AMD CPUs and GPUs in them. Yeah. So, what did you think of the design, the looks, the functionality? Like again, I have, I have so many questions. I want to know what the resolution is on that screen. Is it going to be 720p? Is it going to be 1080p? Is it going to be less than that? Sounds like it's 720. I hope not. What's the battery life? Is it going to be two hours? Is it going to be three hours? Do we going to get six hours? Yeah, we've got nothing about battery life. The controllers, I'm wondering what are going to be included in this whole thing. Is this going to, like, when they showed this off, I noticed that you're, that they've said essentially that the dock and the tablet with the controller that seems to be and by controller i mean the the dock. joy-con the joy-con <laughs> controllers that slide into the side of the screen yes by yes by by bundle i think what i mean is it's going to have two joy-con controllers aka one that slides into each side of the tablet the tablet and the dock now is this going to be like a nickel and dime the crap out of me for various things that games are going to (laughs) need. Like, I think that's, that's, this almost gave me more questions than answers. Everything they showed me pretty much, I kind of knew already. And they were just cementing that this is, was in fact what was happening. And instead of giving any real answers, they didn't. They kind of really left me wanting to ask, you know, like I said, so many more questions. You um, are very, <laughs> you're very focused on tech and numbers and hardware. So, well, they've already said I, that this is not a replacement for the 3DS. This is their, this is a home console first and a on the move console second. Um, but yeah, no, I, I do want to know more about it. I, I want to know, you know, they, they showed Skyrim running on it, which has not been officialized for one, yeah. which is kind of <laughs> funny. Um, they showed a few games on it that looked fantastic. Obviously we knew about Zelda, new Mario. That's pretty exciting. I, I look forward to a new Mario game and it, it looks like they're taking it in a bit of a different direction. I, I saw rings in a Mario game. So that's kind of interesting. Yeah, there's new new Mario. They showed... Uh, it looked like NBA, K, NBA 2K17. Uh, Splatoon. A version of Splatoon. Uh, yeah. Uh, people have figured out that it's not a map that's in existence. So it must... Is it a new game? Is it DLC? Who mm-hmm. knows? They showed Mario Kart footage with characters that aren't in Mario Kart 8. So yep. is it a new version of Mario Kart 8? The Mario stuff is clearly new. Um, yeah, the Mario stuff is definitely new. Which looked really look, look great. There has been some leaked, um, apparently leaked tech uh, specs. So like you were saying about the screen... It looks like the screen is 720, and then when it's in the dock, it's 1080p. And it also showed oh, that it could, output TV, four, it could output 4K as well. Not Obviously, probably not for gaming, more for like Netflix and video streaming. Right, which, which makes sense because the Tegra chip is capable of that. Is like, capable is, of that already. This, this is basically the next generation of the Shield. Yeah, more or less. With Nintendo making it their console. <laughs> And obviously, we all, I think everybody wants to know what sort of price they're looking at as well, right? And the Shield's a great tablet. It's like one of the best Android tablets. 
No, it is uh, like, absolutely. It's a down. great. It's a great tablet. Uh, awesome th- streaming device, and well, unfortunately, it's Android, so it's lacking for games. It's limited to the Android marketplace, which is yeah, for what it is, a wasteland of all kinds of stuff and varying quality. There are great games, don't get me wrong, but it's not the same as having a, a Nintendo lineup. Mm-hmm. I I so, was you. You're gonna say, well. Yeah, I, I just I have so many questions about this system. Well, still. we have breaking news. Actually, it's not breaking. It happened a couple hours ago. Uh, Nintendo tweeted that uh, they will be revealing more information about the Switch on a live stream, January twelfth. Yeah, gaming presentation. So that's where we'll get all our uh, concrete information. Until then, it's all speculation, but we know what it looks like. We know what it's capable of. I'm, I for one saw, I, I was giddy with a grin on my face. I, <laughs> I'm like, this is what I want. Taking Zelda with me on the go to play while I'm at work. I mean, on my lunch break and then coming home and picking up exactly where I left off or taking it when I go walk the dog or, or taking it when I'm playing basketball with all my friends. <laughs> Right. <laughs> or taking it to the rooftop party because I'm not going to the party to see people. I'm going there to play my video game. The trailer was kind what of a funny. Strange trailer, to be honest. <laughs> I, super, I think they super did a good job of getting super. the message out that, you know, you could pause your game, pull it off the dock, and, and walk away with yeah, it. Yeah, it was like immediate uh, transfer from. Being Which on makes the big sense screen. because the tablet itself is what's running <laughs> everything. Nintendo has come out and said that the dock itself is not the main console. Yeah. And essentially the it's, only it's just a dock. thing. Char- charging and power. Yeah. It's for charging and output to the TV. Did, did you notice something else in that trailer? There was no kids. It was all teenagers and young adults. Yeah, that's interesting. So like they were like positioning it as like a, a really cool piece of tech because everyone in that that trailer was really cool and fashionable and living in really swanky houses. So Jeez, clearly, yeah, <laughs> no kidding. I thought it was it was pretty neat. I it, thought it was pretty funny. The basketball players that wanted to play a video game when they were at the basketball court, <laughs> they were tired, but they wanted to keep playing. They were physically limited to play. They couldn't play anymore. They were exhausted, but they could play a video game. Yeah. They showed a pro controller in the tra- trailer as well. They pretty did. much lo- looks like the looks like the Wii U pro controller, which is a good controller. But I'm controller. sure won't be compatible. <laughs> won't be c- compatible with the Wii U, but Oh, you mean the Wii U one won't exactly. be compatible? Exactly. Oh yeah, of course. I'm not. sure it won't be compatible. No. Cuz that would make too much sense. That would make too much sense. Um but that controller looks cool. It's like a standard one. But the I can't it looks, help but wonder how comfortable uh, in the in the trailer they they showed sliding the the Joy Con. Oh, I can't believe we're calling them Joy Cons. They're Joy controllers. Name. I they bring get joy it. to your face. I get it. What a stupid name. Um, <laughs> oh, it's like the Wii and the Wii. Like who is naming shit over at Nintendo? At least this is the Nintendo Switch, which kind of makes sense. At least. Um, <laughs> Wow. <laughs> they look really small. In in the in the video where the guys were playing their NBA. Oh, when you just have the half? Yeah. It, that controller think, looks very small. Yeah, that might be a little uncomfortable in that method, but I don't that's definitely not gonna be the main way of playing. Um I imagine if you're at home you're gonna have multiple pros or someone will have that uh the little controllers on the like the little Accessory that puts them together in a more comfortable form. I don't even know what you call that one. There's like the, a the cradle, the controller yeah, cradle. The yeah, there's Joy-Con a cradle just cradle. for the con- yeah. There's a cradle just for the controller that <laughs> which makes essentially like turn a, it into a to like a pro almost controller. like a pro controller. Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't know. Obviously, the, I wonder if this U... is going to have the the weird Nintendo ness where they're releasing accessories with games. That are going to slide in. Oh, I didn't even on think the about sides. That. I would not. You know what? I wouldn't even. I wouldn't even doubt that. Yeah. You know, so 
I, you could see them sliding into like a steering wheel or some, exactly. something else. Exactly. Um, I mean, yes, that is a very Nintendo thing to do. I. That seems like it would be I right up their alley. It's going to be more comfortable than the Wii U game pad. Like I had some con. Look like you can see some contours on the triggers because it does have shoulder triggers. Um, and then they changed the analog stick placement compared to the Wii U because. Man, that's god awful when you have you have the right analog stick above the buttons. That is so weird. On yeah, the that is tablet. Weird. So they went to a more standard format with that. Um, I don't know, man. I'm super excited. I can't wait until March gets here. Like, I want this now. This is by far and away probably the most Nintendo thing I've ever seen. It's super exciting considering how like not exciting the Wii U was. And even the Wii, like, as a hardcore Nintendo fan, the, the Wii was pretty disappointing. Like, yeah, Wii Sports was awesome, and it sold tons, but it wasn't the console. I don't Nintendo just hasn't been on point with a console that, like, me as a gamer wants. Now, this is, like, this an evolution like of what I Wii want. This to the Wii U 2. Yeah, Th- this, get, yeah this it is, is like an evolution of the idea tablet. of the Wii U and going, okay... I feel like we had some really good stuff here. Doing what you should have done when the Wii U came out, because everyone thought you could take that tablet out of the house. Oh, for sure. But you could barely take it 10 feet away from your console, and then it loses connection. Yeah. (laughs) So this, to me, is a lot more that. An evolution? Yeah. And, And it's very smart to walk away from the Wii and the Wii U name. I think that was smart. Uh, yeah, I I am excited, and I, I just I want to know more because okay. is this thing actually going to be able to push 1080p on my TV? I, I'm pretty sure <sighs> this thing is going to be aiming for 1080p, 30 to 60. Like, it's not going to be beating the PlayStation 4 Pro or Scorpio or anything, but. I'm I'm wondering if it's even going to be hitting what the PS4 and the Xbox One currently are hitting is my question. My guess is it's going to be pretty damn close. Because no matter what Nintendo says about technology and having faster graphics doesn't make a situation better, I totally think that the Wii, if it didn't make my eyes bleed, I probably would have played a lot more. The Wii Wii U U has fantastic visuals. Yeah, but it's no still one very to make limited. Games for it. Yeah, that's. I this think it's going to be more powerful than a Wii U, so it's going to be much. Cl- I think it's. I don't know if it's going to be quite PS4, Xbox One esque level of power, but right. I don't think it'll be too far off. The other question I kind of have is there. I see a lot of concepts happening in this in the in the video that they released. The fact that you could slide off the controllers and hand one to your friend uh, and various other things like that. And I wonder to myself, how is that going to work and how seamless is that actually going to be? Because in my experience, most of the time that stuff's pretty clunky. Going into an option, enabling a certain type of gameplay mode... Saying which controller is which controller. Oh, my guess. Things is like it'll that. Be all, my guess it'll be all automatic. I really hope so. The two controllers have different little, little logos on them, the plus and the minus. So, obviously, one and two. I, it, for it to really work. And, again, I don't know how often you're going to set up that little tablet and play a multiplayer game that you're going to use those little joysticks. It's going to be like a, a, a bonus, a nice thing, but... I'm going to guess most of the time you're going to be at home when you do the multiplayer thing. But that it can do it is still pretty cool at all. Yeah. Um, Watching them connect multiple consoles together. That was interesting. Like uh, l- That's the type of stuff that I mean, right? Normally that kind of well, yeah, thing. Yeah, because they were playing four not... players in the basketball, right? Exactly. And most of the time that stuff is not overly if they can simplify it and it works well, that's awesome. If they can't, that'll kind of suck. I'm sure. I'm sure it's going to be pretty simple. Nintendo's come a long way in terms of that kind of stuff. 
link yeah. cable link cables friend codes and all that nonsense i think that if they hit the <laughs> i think that if they hit the price point right and they get rid of their stupid setup as far as they they need to they need to have a system similar to xbox one and playstation the playstation store though where you have an online cloud oh, like based unified like market Yes, and also when so that instead of having all of the things that you purchase tied to a console, they're tied to your account. Yeah, I think they've done that now. I think they've moved to that with the new Nintendo account that they have. I really hope so because that is super annoying. Yeah, that was super annoying. Like if you bought stuff on the Wii that technically worked on the Wii U digitally, it's, you couldn't really pull it, it forward it was no. stuck on your console and it's stupid and then I, it's and like I have a you, friend of mine who bought literally hundreds of dollars worth of you know virtual virtual console, console games, games. Yeah. and half of them i think They're weren't stranded. even available on the wii u virtual console for and whatever if, reason and if they were you had to like repurchase them exactly and in some instances they give you a discount like ooh, thanks guys but it's like no nah, no, 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 no. Yeah. If I buy Super Mario Brothers for the tenth time, it should work. <laughs> it should work on the next one. But that's the thing. This is the, this is how this brings us back to like PS3 and Xbox 360 and every other console up until this point. That's always how it's been. You get a new console, all your old stuff is gone, stranded, and dead. And now with like the PS4 Pro and the Scorpio, that that's not a rea- that's not the reality anymore. We're more like a Windows PC. Like my old school ass copy of uh, the very first or Call of Duty Two, technically in the console world is like two or three consoles ago. But on PC, right. it's not. I can just play it on my PC regardless of my PC being ten years newer. You know what I mean? Yeah, th- I mean there are various sort of switches that happen on PC that can make it very difficult Which, depending on like the jump from XP to to or sorry from Windows 98 to XP was pretty big. Yeah, there's some niche titles and from that XP got stranded, to, but not to quite Vista. but not quite like this stuff like no, not virtual at all. console stuff or every For other sure. console. So I imagine Going forward with Nintendo, probably they'll have that functionality, but I don't know. I don't think any of your Wii U stuff's going to carry over to this. I think it's going to be starting from square one again. Yeah. I never, that's why I never invested in that stuff. Like There was tons of virtual console games I wanted to buy like as a Nintendo fan to have like on the current system and be able to play it. And I'm like, nope, they, they haven't given me any proof or uh, language saying that this is going to be usable going forward on their other systems. Or yeah. even like a, a service. Like if Nintendo had a service, like a Netflix, for five bucks or ten bucks, that let you just play all their old school games on their whatever console of theirs you have. Man, that's just, just money sitting on the table. Like who wouldn't buy into that? You'd it's have true. so many. Ca- you'd have so many casuals that just want to play stupid old games, right? It's very true. I that could make them a killing anyway. I, I definitely did not. I was like you. I learned my lesson from a friend of mine. Yeah, I just I watched because... him buy all these <laughs> great virtual console titles, and he was so excited about it. Then the Wii U came out, and none of that moved forward, and now nope. they're stuck on his Wii. Yeah, which looks like crap. It's not HD. Nope, the exactly. Control, it doesn't have a nice pro controller like the Wii U does. Nope. Um, it's brutal. Of, yeah, that sucks. Yeah, there's lots, so, of people who, lots of people did that. Exactly. <sighs> anyway, I'm super excited. I can't wait. Hurry up, March. I um, I'm very excited. I just I want to know more. I, I want to see exclusive games. I want to see what they're coming out. What they're going to look like. I want to know more. I want to know. Cost. I don't need I want to know what the. I want to know what the controllers are going to cost. I want to know. <laughs> I don't need anything. How badly they're going to nickel and dime me. What's going to be included? Playing Zelda at the park. <laughs> it's all that matters. I want to know way more about it. For me, I think it's going to really... I think what this really hinges on for me is what they expect people to pay for it. 
Honestly, I think that it, if they it, if honestly, they hit the price point it, properly, it honestly, it, it honestly max four hundred bucks, like three ninety nine Canadian, two ninety nine American. I don't know. I, I feel like that would be a hard pill to swallow. But yeah, but it's more than just a con. It's not just a console. Like it's a tablet too. Like who knows if it's going to have all kinds of regular tablet functionality? Like this is stuff. We like still you said we're going to find out. You know, it may Nintendo, or may not. Though. Right. What are the chances they're going to put a proper web browser on it and things like that? Yeah, who knows? That's the type of stuff that, that I want to know. If if it's essentially a tablet as well, then great. If they put yeah. a proper web browser on it and I can surf the internet and it's got a touch screen for that, great. Yeah, they, haven't they, even, they haven't announced whether they haven't or not even it's even going to have a touch screen. <laughs> I these, these are what I mean. I want to know answers to these questions. I assume their history January making... is a long ass ways away for them to not release more information. I'm honestly really surprised that they didn't have an event happening even in November or December. Yeah, they probably don't. They really still got to move some Wii U consoles just to clear the shelves. Probably got a lot Nobody's of Nobody's buying Wii U regardless. <laughs> probably, it's probably going to have some killer sales. Maybe. <laughs> uh, okay, well, that was the crazy-ass big news. <laughs> so I don't yeah. know how you, how you guys feel about it. Obviously, feel free to share your thoughts with us online. Um, I don't know. I, I, I'm a Nintendo fanboy at heart and always will be, so obviously I'm excited. Hey, so, let, let's be honest. We're both going to pre-order it as soon as we can. We're both going to buy one. <laughs> That's not the, uh, what's up a question here. All I'm saying is that unlike your blind faith over there, you I want to know, know more. Buying. Exactly. <laughs> and this is care. very Nintendo. This is very them showing you a concept of what it could be or what it might be. And not really giving you any real information about it, so I would I just want to know more. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I guess we can get into what you've been playing. We'll rewind <laughs> to the intro or the starting segment. Um, I honestly didn't play a lot. Well, I played Destiny, but none of you guys care to hear about Destiny. <laughs> On the plus side, though, I will share I'm light level three eighty two, and I still haven't even done the raid yet. Wow. There was a lot of a lot of up uh, there. Well, there was a lot of adjust when they did that a patch last week that adjusted. Uh, um, I guess the gear that drops and the light levels. It oh, definitely okay. made it feel less of a slog. Like um, before, I honestly had to grind out to gain like one light level, and now when I sit down and play for say an hour or two, I'm getting like three to four light levels. So I, I, I make some progress and. I'm getting some good loot drop, so I feel I feel more, much more rewarded for the effort I'm putting in. So very yeah, nice. I, I still love and hate that game so much. I'm still playing. I got to do the raid. I got to do the raid. Hopefully, I can do that this weekend. But so I'm actually surprised I, you haven't played the raid yet. Well, I'm trying to do it with my. Yeah, I should just look up some randoms or hook up with randoms to do it. But one of my buddies' uh, coworkers, he's got a crew of guys, and they run it, and I wanted to run it with him, so. Um, that's, they've been away. They like work away. So they're around for a couple weeks and then they're gone. Oh, I so, see. Anyway, I'll get it done eventually. That's my end game, but that's it. Once I kind of do the raid, I'm kind of almost done. Wow. Um, so that's good. Cause there's lots of stuff coming out. Um, <laughs> I did play something new. I okay. did play some of the infinite warfare. Blah, 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 in, Call of duty, infinite warfare. I don't know why I can't say that properly. <laughs> Warfare. The Infinite Warfare beta? Yes. Uh, on PS4, it was open to all PlayStation Plus uh, members. Uh, I completely it was closed. forgot about it on yeah. the weekend. <laughs> it was closed the week before, and then it was uh, open last weekend. So I played a little bit of it. Um, and... Um, yeah, it <laughs> just feels like Call of Duty, but now you can wall run, and it feels a lot like Black Ops Three multiplayer. Okay, um, it's kind of got the classes. That, I was gonna say with the different weapon types and or, you could wall run uh, special already, abilities. So. so it feels very similar to Black Ops Three, but I just don't feel that it plays as well as like Titanfall. 
Uh, especially with Titanfall 2 coming out uh, like this uh. week. Like next time we sit down and talk, we'll most likely have both played it. Well, I will have played it for sure because oh, no, I already I'm, purchased it. I'm purchasing it. That's not a question. Um, so I, my brother-in-law really wants it to play it. And I'm just like, I don't know. If I really want to play the campaign. It's really expensive though. Like, $80 like a, Canadian eight, just to play the campaign. Well, just going to be five hours, maybe? Just for the regular version. That doesn't include the remaster. So it's like 110 bucks with the remaster, <sighs> which is what more people are even more excited about. It's, don't get me wrong. Uh, Modern Warfare 2? Is it 2? No, it was, that was Call of Duty Modern Warfare. Yeah. Sorry. Call of Duty Modern Warfare. Arguably uh, the best probably game one of the best they've maybe ever Duties. made. Um, the remastered version comes with the digital deluxe uh, legacy edition, which is 110 bucks. I think it's like 89 American, which is pretty pricey. And I don't know if I really care to play that again, even though it's remastered. I that was an game. awesome game. Don't get me it wrong. Was an awesome game, that was a didn't... great game. And playing it with better graphics and stuff would be great, but. I'll have Titanfall 2 to play and yeah. the actual Infinite Warfare campaign. And I'll probably end up getting Battlefield 1 at some point. And then... Um, See, that's that's where I'm at. All, all the guys that I play games Dishonored with... Dishonored 2. They've already bought Battlefield 1. I'm already hearing all of them talk right, about right, how right. awesome it is, how yeah. everybody else needs to get it, because the whole crew's together. We got 12 people playing it. Holy and, shit. Yeah, so... You know, I'll probably have to buy it. Yeah. Oh, but not you know before gonna... I buy Titanfall 2 and you... play the snot out of it first. You know it's going to go on sale. That's the thing. The EA games always go on sale. Um, so, yeah, I played some Infinite Warfare beta. It felt like Call of Duty. Um, running around corners, getting shot in the face. Um, <laughs> people jumping around like idiots and slide sliding into kills to get you. Um, so you got your ass kicked? Uh, no, I did all right. I did compared to me playing Destiny, I did get my ass kicked. Whereas in Destiny, I kick ass. Um, it wasn't bad. I just, I just feel like I've played it before. It's just got a new coat of paint on it. Right. Not as bad as the Modern Warfare three, Modern Warfare three coat of paint, which literally felt like a freaking map pack. Um, yeah, you know, there is a bunch bad. of new stuff, and uh, the progression's different. The unlocks are different. Like everything's different. But it still felt familiar. I guess that's a good thing. Because you don't want to rock the boat too much with the Call of Duty players. But it was just like... I think I, that's the, the part of the problem uh, with yeah. Call of Duty at this point. Is when they change too much, the players get upset with them. And if they don't change enough, then the players get upset with them. It's so just, they're no, there's sort no freaking of winning. stuck between a rock and a hard place there. I, ultimately, I think they just got to make the game that they're going to make... And having three studios cranking out a game every three years, I don't know. Uh, I'm, yeah, like me. Like, that's that's a like, hard like one. Battlefield One apparently sold like combined more copies than Battlefield Four and Battlefield H- Hardline, or was it Star? Or yeah. Hardline, I'm not surprised, because yeah. from what I understand, that game did not do great. But still, Battlefront 4 is a hugely anticipated title, and to surpass that's pretty impressive, considering how much of a hot mess that was when it launched. You are, you, so? are you thinking of Battlefront and Hardline, or are you thinking Battlefield 4? It was Battlefield 4, wasn't it? Or am I getting mixed up? I don't know. I didn't see the story, so... Yeah, I didn't link it. Yeah, whatever. Just whatever I say is right. It sold so. lots. It's sold lots. Saying. It's doing really well. People love it. Yeah. I'm kind of choked. That well, like I'm I said, I, mad I, didn't I get have it. a bunch of people that are At this telling point, me I, I need just... to get on it and, and play it and stuff. So Yeah. Um, but, yeah, so Infinite Warfare, uh, it wasn't bad, but I'm just like, I'm more excited for Titanfall, and I really like the way Titanfall feels and plays better, I feel, I think. Like, it just seems like, I don't know. Well, think about it. It's the but, uh, guys that created Call of Duty. It is the guys who created Call of Duty as opposed They're to the making guys a better Call of it. Duty game, not called Call of Duty. <laughs> <laughs> I am still excited to play like the campaign. Like that space fighting shit looks cool. Uh, I like the future stuff. Uh, yeah. 
that's kind of why I was down on Battlefield One because I'm like, ah, oh, World War One, eh. but <laughs> turns out they freaking cranked it out of the park with that. God damn it! I'm going to buy freaking Battlefield. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, Titanfall Two. I already I pre-ordered it. Hopefully, right. I should be preloading it soon because it comes out on Friday. Which is again a weird ass. Like They're, everything's Friday, uh, and then Call of Duty is the following Friday. So Battlefield was last Friday. Infinite War or Titanfall Two is this Friday, and then Infinite Warfare is next Friday. Like Friday, Friday, Friday. The three biggest shooters in the world. Jesus Christ! <laughs> Fucking guys can give us just a little bit of a break. <laughs> yeah, and I and I've got like no time to play any of them, pretty much. So <laughs> yeah, man. it's brutal. I did not get a chance to play much this weekend. I did get a chance on Saturday morning. Before I let the Rugrats out uh, and my <laughs> wife was asleep, I was able to dive into some VR. And I more or less finished the PlayStation VR Worlds game, quote unquote game. I finished Scavenger's Odyssey as well as London Heist. I played a bit of the VR Luge stuff, which made me feel weird didn't make me sick or anything like that but just made me feel a bit strange yeah i heard that's the worst game yeah and it's disc. it's just not overly fun uh, i found it was just very i move my head side to side and i cruise down a run and try not to hit cars and if i do hit something it does a very strange thing that really kind of the way the jank happens really pulls you out of vr in a weird way and reminds you that you're in VR, which I think might be part of what made me feel odd. Um, I did play some of the... Oh, what is it called now? There's there's one where you're playing... It's like a game where you have a paddle. It's kind of like Pong, <laughs> really. Hypercube? No, Super Hypercube is a different actual game. It's kind of similar to that, though. And you have a paddle in front of you, and you use your head to move the paddle, and there's a ball that comes towards you. And you can bounce it off the walls of a room and the ceiling and the floor. And there's the computer controlling another paddle on the opposite side. And obviously, the whole idea is to try and get the computer to screw up and not to miss the ball. Mm -hmm. uh, and as you as you keep playing they get there's various abilities that the computer paddle has so one is kind of like a tornado where it will spin the ball and it, it gets as it goes away from you it kind of spins out of control in a weird way uh, there's another one where it will send two balls at you at the same time things like that to try and change things up which is kind of fun I, I enjoyed it it wasn't so so Great. VR Pong? More or less, yep. <laughs> um, Are you using the controller or the move controllers? Or? No, with, with that, you're actually just using your head. It's just oh, okay. a, so it's like where Headlander, you look. Then. Yeah. Or not Headlander, Headmaster. Very yeah, similar. Terrible fucking name. <laughs> Very similar want, to that. I don't ever want to be the Headmaster. Um, out of all of it, definitely <laughs> London just Heist. Just that one go, eh? <laughs> <laughs> I am. <laughs> London Heist was super cool, but very short. Disappointingly short, I think. Yeah. Um, and I th think Scavenger's Odyssey was surprisingly the gem in that collection, I think. Yeah. It is... Better they, than the London Heist shit? Like I said, London Heist is super cool, but it's so short. You essentially have three quasi-levels. Yeah. And then you have a bit of a shooting gallery. The shooting gallery is fun. It's something you can do, you know, plink off some stuff. It's kind of neat. And it, it feels cool because you're in VR. You, you have targets popping up to the right and to the left. So you actually have to turn your head and things like that. It's neat. But I don't know how much substance there is there. I played it for 15, 20 minutes and I was pretty much done. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe I'll go back in there and, and plink away a bit more, but chances are like I, I don't know i don't care to try and get myself on the leaderboards i don't need to be number one for some people that 
that might be great. I don't know. For, for myself, I don't really care. Is that basically all it is? Is like a freaking shooting gallery? Yep. And they, like at the end of the day, there's a few levels that change, and you can. One of them is in the dark, and where the targets pop up, there's like a little spotlight on them. Another level is in like a warehouse, and another level there's you have to try and shoot paint cans off of these rails, but put them into the proper um, bins, I guess. So you shoot the paint cans into the proper bins, <laughs> as well as other things that are showing up while you still have to obviously shoot and reload and things like that. Um, so, like I said, it's it's fun. It's just there's not a ton of substance there. I don't think it's too bad. It's and the London Heist game itself, it starts off with you seated in a chair with a guy talking to you. The first real level is neat, but you're sitting in a chair smoking cigars and playing with a few things that you can play with. Then the next level, you're in an office, you know, and then there's a shootout. But again, that's kind of it. And then there's the level that you saw with the van driving down the highway, which is super cool. But then after that, you're, you're just in a, you're back in the warehouse and this, you know, and some choices need to get made. And then that's pretty much the whole game. Yeah. It's, it's really not long. Um, whereas scavengers odyssey felt like a game, like felt like you were actually playing something and where it ended with some real progression, you wanted to know more and you were wanted to they did a great job of ending it they had built a world already when i ended that game i wanted to know way more about who i was where i was going all kinds of like i had so many questions about the story and the universe and what was happening and that was cool and that was a you know a few hours right so it was actually the, yeah that definitely seems, feels the like most, a real game <laughs> yeah it was actually kind of meaty, you know. Um, so that's that was kind of my take on PlayStation VR worlds. I still haven't done the shark part, yeah, because that scares me. I really wish there was an easy way for me to share my games with you, because unfortunately I didn't get them um, via disc. Yeah, and fuck Batman, like. I was, playing Batman. Cool. I was playing Batman again, and it's awesome. And Area X in Res is freaking unreal. Yeah. Um, I got what I got to go play is uh, I was uh, this guy I follow on Twitter. Um, he is he works for CNET. He's on yeah. one of their daily shows, and uh, he was talking about. Um, is that Jeff Bacalar? No. Uh, oh, okay. It's uh, Jeff as well. <laughs> a lot of Jeffs uh, in the video game industry. Jeff Kanata. Oh, okay. He was talking about Robot Rescue, which is part of the Playroom VR, which is a free game for anyone who has. Yeah, it's actually VR. installed. I haven't, um, I haven't dove in there, but apparently he's talking it's really about fun. Uh, the Robot Rescue, which is like a game within that game, and he said it's one of the best um, VR, VR experiences things that he's played. Like it's a little, it's a. It's a third person platformer where you're like helping these little robots traverse the environment and you're kind of like you know using the move controllers or maybe you're just using the joystick but you are reaching in their world and helping them traverse it yep and he was going off saying how good it was and he's like oh I'm, like it's a short game right and he's like if this was a full game he was pretty much saying it would be like a a killer vr app I feel so, like that's... I gotta go try it. I haven't tried it. I ha- I have I, that installed and I just haven't gotten to it. I feel like there's a game coming up that actually does some stuff similar to that. It'll, it'll be... Who knows? Maybe they might be working on a full game, but I don't yeah. know. Yeah. Yeah, so... Um, so, yeah. Um, that's pretty much all I played. I yeah, got, I got that's a little all I played bit of time too. to play some VR. I haven't really had a chance to play anything else. Well, next which week, is sad, uh, and I'm kind of disappointed in myself. Next week, I'll hopefully have that Robot Rescue to talk about. I'll definitely have Titanfall 2 to talk about. I have heard some of the some of the VR Playroom stuff is really cool because people 
one person can be in VR and other people can be using controllers. Yeah, it was designed so that people that yeah. aren't wearing the headset can interact. Almost like a party game. Yeah. And it's free. So Yeah. So it's I've been so actually meaning to try that out with my <laughs> wife and stuff and see if that's what, what that's all about. I still got to make my wife have a heart attack. <laughs> Oh man! And I said, I really want to put my sister in law in there because she's into scary movies and shit like that. Yeah, I just really like to see what her reaction would be to like the kitchen demo. If you do that, you you know you have to record it. Oh right? yeah, for sure. <laughs> put it up on the website without her knowing. Um. So yeah, that's it for what you've been playing. I guess we can jump back into news. We yeah. talked about the Switch. Uh, sold day one. I already got my pre-order, even though no one's open pre-orders. I already have one. Uh. <laughs> Sure, I'm pretty sure I'll be able to get it. Um, Star Trek Bridge Crew was pushed into 2017. I saw uh, that. That was a uh, pretty anticipated uh, multiplayer VR game coming out. I think it was no. I want to say it was November. I can't yeah. say I'm surprised for the Vive, Oculus, Rift, and PlayStation VR. It's coming out for yeah. everything. We unfortunately didn't get a chance to play it at PAX. Uh, the lineups are ginormous and probably could have, you know, shouldered our way into it. But uh, we just we just didn't get around to being assholes and doing that. It I, looked cool. And from what I've heard from people who are playing it, it sounds pretty neat. I wonder, I really wonder how much of that being pushed back has to do with they want more people to have VR. Because that's a, that's a game that you need multiple people in VR in order to mm. do it. So you and some friends kind of all need to be in VR in order to really make that work. I'm gonna guess. I, it's I think just, obviously I'm you can guess do it with polish. randos, but I I, I yeah, feel clearly, like that would be better with friends or people you know. Clearly, this game is meant for multiplayer. I don't think you're gonna have all four people sitting together. No, that, that's what you I'm saying. Could, but I imagine that's going to be very hard to do. <laughs> no, no, I'm not talking about in the same room. I'm talking about yeah, yeah. just people that you know with VR so that oh, we can all okay. get together in the that's game true. and think, play it. I think I've seen... I haven't seen the bundles available anywhere since launch. I have seen the random just headset around. Like I was at Walmart today and they had one headset. And I think it was EB and they had a headset. But no one has like the bundles. So, yeah, we were I in EB know. on the weekend, and the guy was saying that they they were the same thing, no bundles. Uh, I think he said they would just sold out of the headset alone. Uh, they had one headset by itself at Best Buy, though, but no bundles. Yeah, so, it's, so yeah, it must be moving. It's not like it's sitting in giant piles. I'm nope. pretty happy with my purchase, obviously. Um, we've been ranting and raving about VR in the last couple episodes, so... I'm super happy with that um, still, so... So that sucks, because that would have been cool to play. Yeah. Voice actors in the Screen Actors Guild have gone on strike. Uh, this was, like, not rumored, but they were talking about this happening before we recorded last week. And apparently... They've been in negotiations for, like, I can't remember how long. It's been a while now. Yeah, and they just finally have gone on strike because they're looking for all kinds of uh, benefits, similar to regular actors when they're involved with movies and so forth, uh, seeing how big the video game industry is, and obviously just a lot of stuff for treatment, workplace safety, all kinds of stuff like that. Uh, that sucks. Yep. Union shit sucks. Striking sucks. I, to be quite honest, um, I'm kind of going through this with my work right now. We're a big ass union, and our employer wants to take lots of stuff from us as opposed to give us stuff when <laughs> the company is doing really, really well. And it doesn't make sense that why would you take stuff from us when we're succeeding as a whole? And it's you're making tons of money, yet you want to worsen our work conditions. And not, uh, you know, fiscally or financially reward us for all the successes we've been having. You just want to take stuff. It just makes no sense. And it's really kind of aggravating and angering. Um, you know, and we're going to lose some stuff that protects our position. And it just, I can totally relate to what's going on here. Because depending, you know, you're working on a AAA game. Yeah, it's freaking wine and caviar. 
and you're a known actor, you get all the benefits, but you're the new guy coming up with a small part. You don't get anything. You probably get not treated very well. It's probably very different contrast in working conditions, treatment, and financial payment. Like, it's, I don't know. It's, it's strikes suck. Unions suck. Big companies taking advantage of employees sucks, period, on all and every level. I think... I think that you just nailed it on the head. I think that companies taking advantage of employees sucks. And it really sucks, And too, that, like, in turn, means that we have to have unions so that the workers have enough power to actually do something yeah, about it. You know what's insane? The voice actors have a union because they're, like, associated with the Screen Actors Guild. Yeah. But then, like, the developers who work the hardest and do crunch time and have divorces and get sick from all the stress of crunch time. They don't even have a union. They have no representation. They have no protection. It's basically, oh, you don't like it. Well, there's the door. You you do what, you know, those poor people are just I'm totally... honestly surprised the video game industry hasn't... Well, something. they don't want a union, obviously. The, the big companies don't want a union. Of course they don't. Nobody but if all no of the people companies. in the industry got together and decided, like, this would be a good thing to do, the... The, the companies know, wouldn't such, have a choice. It's such right? a hard thing, though, because the first guy who does it, he's going to take the bullet and he's going to lose his job. You know, yep. it, it's so it's so hard. And these companies know they take advantage of employees. And these, oh, it's like, where are you going to go, huh? This you know, this is a really important story. Um, I one of the one of the big things they're fighting for is actually secondary compensation, which means that if a game is a huge success they actually get a bonus. You know, so currently developers, artists, executives, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, get a big bonus when the game does well, but because the voice actors are somehow not a part of that, they don't. Yeah, they come in and go out and they're not in exactly. the office all the time like Bob the other, and Harry. The other aspect <laughs> of it is transparency. A lot of times these voice actors get hired and they don't even know what game they're being hired to work well, on. That makes sense. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, with NDAs and things like that, yeah, that's true. A lot you of, know, they, a lot sh- of they should be able to know <laughs> what you're doing, what a they're, lot of, a lot of actors have spilled, uh, voice actors have spilled the beans on stuff that were, was under development. So yeah. I'm sure they could with more like maybe some serious punishments. Like, Oh, you let it leak. Well, guess what? You're recast. Yeah, you know, if you do stuff like that in the contract, I guarantee you that they would keep their their lips sealed if they knew that they were the main character in Grand Theft Auto Six, you know, or something like that. I ain't gonna fucking tell anyone, knowing that my ass is on the line, if I let that cat out of the bag. Yeah, I I I, I wish them well, and I hope that it works yeah, out. And I, I, I think they- it really sucks for a while because we're gonna have because let's be honest, all of the best talent as far as voice acting in games are going to be members of this. All the oh, big absolutely. names that we all think <laughs> of when we think of big games, they're all going to be caught up in this. Um, I wonder if this so, will affect anything, you know, like the writer strike, strike with TV. Oh, man, that really, sure affected it. Oh, God, that ruined so many series. Lost. <laughs> oh, it was brutal. Um, yeah. There's a lot of stuff that fell victim to that writer strike. Pretty much any daytime and nighttime talk show. Oh, my God, the... <laughs> The comedy, <laughs> the opening segment bits were freaking oh, yeah. painful. Oh, that's what killed Heroes. Oh, yeah. That's the second true. season yeah. of Hero- Heroes was yeah. awful. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Heroes is part of that, too. That's right. Yeah. Yeah, I know. That was, uh, that was bad. I wish him luck as being someone who can relate to this kind of bullshit. Um, I really hope they come out the other end successful. Yeah. Um, a retailer tries charging people to demo PlayStation VR. I don't really care that much. People on the internet were kind of butthurt about this. Um, it Honestly, if you're a video game store, it doesn't really make sense that you would pay to try it because you kind of got to see it to believe it and then you want to buy it. Um, they will give you your money back if you decide to end up buying the headset. This is kind of like a wine tasting. It is, yeah. You, you If if you try it and you like it, we're not going to charge you anything. If you try it and you don't like it and you want to walk away, we're going to charge you 15 euros, though? That's, That's for half f- an hour, yeah. 
that seems very expensive. I guess if you think about it, when we went to PAX or when I went to E3 or when we go to these game conventions, you're, you're paying $100 to be at the convention just for your ticket, let alone cost to get to these places. So it is pretty much a bar- it is a bargain. It's not exactly <laughs> like there's VR arcades popping up everywhere and your friends might not have it. So that's where I, I'm not very I upset. I just want to point not, out that it is kind of multiple places around me, Best Buys and EB Games, have were demoing demos. these for yeah. free. That's where it's kind of grimy because so a lot of big chains seems have it for free. Dirty. Because they're a big chain. Yeah, that's true. They are. They're, they're like the game, game. They're store like the, in they're the Europe. Europe. They're the European version of EB. Yeah. That's stupid. <laughs> uh, that's funny. No, I'm sure five 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 pounds for for ten minutes, or fifteen pounds for thirty minutes. That's yeah. crazy. Uh, good luck, guys. So I I don't know. I this seems like just another way that people are trying to bend other people over. I don't know. Hey, got to make money where where you can, man. I guess if nobody does it, then they're not going to make any money, and somebody up top in upper management is going to look like a real fucking idiot. And I hope that happens. I hope the Brits are like, forget that noise. This is stupid as hell. And somebody just looks like an idiot. Oh, yeah, I'm sure. Because right now, this is bringing just negative press, because you just look like a money-grubbing asshole when you do that. Or all publicity is good publicity, because everyone's talking about their chain. (laughs) Yeah, talking about how they're not going to go there and buy anything. Um, Xbox <laughs> Live Games with Gold for November was announced. Um, that it was. What is it? What do we have here? Super Dungeon Bros on Xbox One. Super Dungeon Bros. Murdered Soul Suspect as well on Xbox One. That and was mildly interesting. Yeah, it wasn't received very well. It didn't get good ratings when it came out. Um Monkey Island Special Edition uh, on Xbox 360, which is backwards compatible with the Xbox One. And then Far Cry 3 Blood Dragon, which actually isn't bad. I like that one. I played that on PC. Yeah, Blood Dragon was kind of funky and wild and so, interesting. I eh. Murdered is one of those games where I feel like I'll probably play it. I'll probably enjoy it. I might not finish it, but as a free game, probably probably something fun to play. Yeah. Uh, my gold has lapsed, and nothing here clearly makes me want to renew it. <laughs> Fair enough. As somebody who has gold, uh, it's a big bonus for me. So yeah, uh, PlayStation Plus free games for November. In my opinion, also a freaking pile of steaming. Ah oh, man, I just don't care about anything, and this is just me. There's, uh, there's, this is not to say the quality of games that are here. Um, there's good games like in the gold, and there's probably decent games here but i just nothing speaks to me um everyone's gone to the rapture ps4 the deadly tower of monsters ps4 i've never even heard about that i don't even know what that is uh dirt 3 ps3 that's a good game uh costume quest 2 ps3 that's also a decent game that's Uh, fun letter quest remastered vita which is crossed by with ps4 so that's also ps4 no idea what that is Pumped BMX Plus. <laughs> Fucking no I There's a trailer video here, I'm sure. it. Uh, no, there is no trailer. That's just the freaking picture. Never mind. There's no trailers with what this stuff is. I'm very um, excited to meh. play Everybody's Gone to the Rapture, to be honest with you. Because that was a game that I wanted to play when it came out, but I had a hard time it justifying some, the price. some hype, didn't it? Yeah. Oh, but yeah, it just seemed... My sister-in-law wanted to play that. She was like talking about it. It was a f- wasn't it done by the same guys that did Gone Home? No, I don't think so. No? No. That, but I think it's in that vein of one of those types of... Yes. Artsy farts. It's a similar st- vein. Stupid games. It's not Walk stupid. around. I'm just and- kidding. I'm sure it's fantastic. Actually, I think it got decent ratings. I don't want to look it up. <laughs> uh, uh, I guess another big story this week... Um, that uh, a lot of publications were making a big deal about was um, I think it, I think it is a big deal. And we, so this is not the first time. Uh, basically, Bethesda came out 
and was like, yeah, nobody's getting review copies of our games. And this is like huge sites like IGN and Kotaku and like Friends Jet Bomb and all the big sites. Like they're Beth- sending Bethesda out was media like, review copies one day before yeah, release. One day before. So they're basically there's going to be no reviews until the day the game comes out and most people will obviously be stuck with their pre-orders or um, blah, blah, blah. And they were like, yeah, we want everyone to play the game at the same time. And then it, it's like, okay, yeah, sure, that's great in theory. But you sent the game to some YouTubers a month early. Oh, and guess what? They all have positive, glowing, insane videos of how much they love the game. That, oh, we weird. Because you can give it to a fanboy and he's going to gush about it. And you can't give it to media without them giving their honest opinion, whether it's good or bad. So, like, do you take that risk of losing out on, you know, pre orders? Because IGN gave your game a seven. So someone's like, oh, I didn't get a nine or an eight or a ten or whatever their cutoff is in their mind. So they, they're like, it's not good even though seven is a spectacular score, but they lend a more critical eye to it as opposed to an enthusiastic eye. It absolutely makes, I, it makes sense to me. You give me the game. I'm going to say it's fucking awesome. Cause I'm going to be super hyped that I got to play it. And then I'm not going to have bad shit to say about it until a month later when I played it for a hundred hours. And I'm like, you know what? Actually, there's a lot of fucking problems with this game. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, this, this feels very, money this is a way that they can keep reviews positive from happening because before the the game releases so that anybody who wants to buy the game or is thinking about pre-orders will do so which to be fair i've said unless you know a game is a known quantity and is supposed to be awesome don't fucking pre-order games so, to be fair, gamers in their infinite idiocy have sort of brought this upon themselves. True story. But that being said, I think that this is kind of dirty in a way because instead of giving those people a way to walk away from their pre orders because the game's a steaming pile of crap, now they're kind of stuck with it because they had no way of knowing whether or not the game was any good beforehand or not. And again, this is all entirely up to people pre-ordering games. So if the lesson here is anything, it's don't fucking pre-order games. Yeah, like I know. But I, I want still think Titan it's Fall stupid too. I I still think it's stupid though that that they would be willing to to risk that. Uh, I think it's dirty, and I think it sucks too because as a as a media, especially, I mean, we don't we get sent games and we play them and we talk about them on our podcast. We do not review games necessarily no we as a as a company who reviews i call it a review but not a real they're not a real in-depth review exactly but similar as a company impressions but as a company like ign or GameSpot or giant bomb or any of those they get games and they have to play through the whole game so when you get sent a game you know mafia 3 huge open world game Civ 4 or Civ 6, huge, massive game. And you're only getting the game the day before? Oh, yeah. That's... Let's be honest. <laughs> what's happening? The The world of the internet is all about who can get their review out first. You're just going to get... So now I'm worried now. that you're going to get super shit reviews yeah. rushed out to try and get in on that before you've actually done a proper review. Because you've so, got to hit the gold rush for the SEO so your review exactly. comes up first on Google. So, I feel like this is actually, this only hurts everyone except the publisher. Yeah, I don't know, because I think the Google search results on these games already, the top results are the positive YouTube videos. So, they're really doing a manipulation of the message, um, is the message they created. So yeah, that's where like you were saying, it is really freaking kind of dirty. See, if they if they didn't want to give the game to anybody, period. Don't give it to them. Just then, sell then it. You know what they should do is have a period where they sell it to these guys 
a week or two before with embargoes for release date. If it's an issue of money of giving free copies where they don't feel it's effective or they want to control the message, just do that. You have an embargo. It's release date. 12 yeah. p 12 p.m. noon release date. Everyone gets their impressions out at the same time, videos at the same time. Yeah. Except for I'm sure they'll have a few of their back pocket YouTubers that they will allow to get their message out earlier or Twitch streamers because that's that's all it's been lately. I just I th- I think that it's just this whole they they're saying uh, that they want to release their their message and they want the you know the media to have essentially the same timing or whatever as everyone else but then they go ahead and they do pre-reviews and they do these big preview events and things like that so you you're try it's like they're they don't even know what the hell they want no <laughs> it's it, it's evolving it's i i understand what they're doing if if it was me and it was me I I would do pretty much the exact same thing. I would not give copies to Total Biscuit or Jim Sterling, uh, even though those guys are fantastic and super critical, because if they don't like my game, they have a lot of influence, and they're going to effectively put a dent in my pre-orders. But if I can go give it to, I don't know, a random flavor of the week YouTuber that isn't critical on this side... Who's going to be like, this is the best game ever. Oh, my God, it's awesome. They gave me $20,000, but I didn't tell you that. Uh, disclaimer in the more c- comments below that this is an ad, basically. I'm going to yep. give it to that guy because that's going to sell copies of the game. And I'm going to give early access to the guy I can control as opposed to the guy I can't control, which can hurt my pocketbook. It makes sense. I under- absolutely understand why they're doing it totally. But it's really shitty. I, I, yeah. Because we've, I understand we've trying seen to... over the years all the shitty stuff that's starting to come out of the drama and crappy uh, ethics that YouTubers have. There's a lot of shit that is really I feel gross. like this is just feeding into it, though. This no, isn't it helping it at no, all. Now is, the publishers not, are just getting it's not right in into head it. first. It's not feeding into it. It's just the blatant, we're manipulating and taking advantage of it. Cause Absolutely. Do, do I want, like I said, do I want those critical thinkers that are going to properly review my product for the steaming polish shit it is or praise it but I don't know well no fuck they know they know if their product's good or bad but or am I going to totally just give it to this in quotations mark extension of PR aka YouTuber streamer twitcher right yeah that's 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 what it is that's what it's been for years now and they're just blatantly coming out and saying it They're saying, we don't care about you traditional media. Your value to us is none because you impact us. You leak our stories. You burst our bubbles. And it's like, you know what? We're (laughs) kind of done with you. We're just going to go to the the manipulative scene that we can take advantage of, which is this YouTube world and Twitch world. You also have to think right now, they're also doing this whole... Before, you used to be able to demo a game. Yeah, demos are well, now still demos. But nobody not. releases demos. Instead, they they quote unquote have betas, which like let's be honest, those are not betas. The the betas have like there are, there are a few that they do in fact open up issues and they are allow them to work on things. I'm sure in that regard, yes, they are a beta. But for all intents and purposes, it's a glorified demo that you had to pre-order the game in order to play. Yeah. And I think that that's dirty. And then now, now, if you pre-order Dishonored 2, for example, well, that's, Bethesda this, will let you play it a day before the launch. That's exactly what this brings. The, this and is why EA, the story has come to hey, fruition man, everywhere. You, you wanted to play Battlefield 3 early? Hey, yeah. you paid twenty bucks to be on an early enlister list. Yeah, you paid which means you get to play three three dollar three days early now. Gears of War and Forza Horizon Three did it with one hundred and twenty dollar deluxe editions. You got to play it the Friday before the Tuesday release. I, I yeah, and they used to just be called demos, man. You used to be able to just log in a few weeks before. And they would have released a demo, and you'd go play the demo and decide whether or not you wanted to play the game. 
They still do demos, but now they do them after launch, which makes sense, too. I don't want to give you too much of a hit, because if you play too much of my beta slash demo, you might not buy the game, or you might find out that you don't like it, whereas if you buy it and take it home and pop it in, well, I got that sale. I don't care what happens after that. That's a sad fact of the corporate reality, right? Yeah. They, they want to make money. It, it, yeah, it's gross. I just think this is going <laughs> to lead to shittier reviews. Yeah, there's definitely going to be some dirtier crap happening on YouTube with people oh, saying, uh, oh, yeah, I'm reviewing this game. You should, I guess that's the due diligence is on all of us to know that if someone has something positive and you don't know them, which is to be quite honest, I don't know a lot of YouTubers. There's tons out there with like millions of subscribers. They're here one day, gone the next, um, super for hire. Like I, I make fun of it, but it, honestly, it's they're for hire PR. That's all they are. They've got there for business inquiries. Use this email. You'll notice it on all their YouTube pages and their and their Twitter profiles and their Twitch profiles. They're basically for hire. You can pay them to spin out your message. Like it's, it's all PewDiePie does. Like he gets his views, but you see games on his channel. They've usually been paid for, a lot of them. And they yeah. pay a lot of money to get him to play a game. And that's, that's what a lot of them do. And that's a business. And it's and that's it's, fine, but I hate that they're not telling people that that's what it is. And no, it's, I, it's in the I small, it's in the small stuff, print. So the due diligence sometimes, is... Sometimes it's not even in the small print. So the that's, due diligence is on us to look at, is this someone I know? Is this someone I trust? Is this someone I've been following for a really long time? with a viewpoint similar to mine, and then I know he's given me the truth. And then I guess at the be-all, end-all, is like even those people nowadays, a few of them, you they, they'll they have the disclosure in there saying that this was an ad. And But if you know them, you know whether they're actually being genuine or if they're doing a commercial, you can tell the difference. Because to be honest, there's a few people I follow, and I've been noticing how they talk much differently when it's not their genuine <laughs> opinion. It's still positive and glowing, but there's something definitely different in it when it's a commercial that's yeah. essentially been sponsored uh, content. Um, so, I know, yeah. a, and I do appreciate that some of the people out there, they're very open about the fact that this is sponsored content. I'm getting paid money to tell you about this thing. Yeah, and it's just, it's just going to get worse. Like me, on, me, honestly, I don't look for negativity. Like negative. I don't look to pick up a game apart. I look to play a game for fun. Is the gameplay loop record, uh, rewarding? Was it something that I enjoyed doing over and over again? Because that's all games are. It's rinse, repeat, rinse, repeat. You're doing the same thing. But are you enjoying the mechanic? For me, I have a solid gameplay loop. I will like the game. And yeah, it can have bugs. It can have not the best story. It can have a lot of issues. I'm not going to dwell on that stuff because the core, it's a game. The game, the game I'm playing is good. Then that's, I'm going to have a positive outlook on it. Some people like to nitpick stuff. Oh yeah. I played it once and it crashed. That game's fucking garbage. EA sucks. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, I definitely tend to be a bit more like you. I'll, I'll play something. I'll really enjoy it. Then I'll talk to somebody a day or a week or whatever later and they'll be tell, talking to me about it and they're super negative and I'm sitting there you know having that conversation and talking to them and I'm going no I quite enjoyed it yes it had some issues but I quite enjoyed it and yeah. I find I do a similar thing with movies friends of mine get like so frustrated with me because I tend to uh, like a lot of films and it's, I think that it just, it has, I have the ability to kind of sit back. Turn and your really critical just, thinking brain off and just be there for the ride and the enjoyment. Yeah, be entertained. Are you not entertained? Exactly. I you know, and obviously some I, I enjoy more than others, but yeah, ultimately it's, it is what it is. So, so don't pre I games. still think this is bad. I still think this sucks. It does it does suck. It does suck. Especially from somebody like Bethesda where their games tend to be big. Yeah, and they know, tend to be Skyrim. They tend to be they, pretty good most of the time, but sometimes they're not. And, you know what really sucks? Yeah, yeah. What really sucks is that they don't send me all the games. <laughs> I don't get all the games early. 
this is bullshit. This is, this is all I gotta say. <laughs> Yeah, yeah that's it. We're not we're not talking about anything Bethesda anymore. They don't sell it. Send us yep. shit. Well, I, it's funny because <laughs> I, I asked for Dishonored 2, and they told me, we'll let you know if they're available. But clearly, they're not going to be available because everyone else is coming out of the woodwork saying, hey, look, this is the message we got. Yeah. Because people are like, hey, YouTuber B has this. Why aren't you guys talking about it? And that's just been the repeating message lately. And that's the new reality we live in. Just got to you know what you like. You got to get more and for you got to get more followers on the Twitter and get more people to like you on well, the YouTube. Yeah, should should buy more followers like the rest of them. Yeah, that's right. There you go. Um, no, but you know what you like. You like the Fifas, you like the Call of Duty, you like I know I like Titanfall, so I'm going to like Titanfall too. I don't too. like the FIFA. I know, I'm just using an example. Oh, okay. Okay. But like when it comes to a new quantity like Horizon Zero Dawn. If I didn't play it, it looks amazing, but I still would have had my reservations as a new IP. You know, look how the order turned out, right? Yep. Even though I enjoyed the order, super short, a lot of potential, sequel will be better. But a lot of people were not happy with the fact that it was short. If you, I still love the order. I yeah, really want it was, to I thought it, it I thought it was a good game, but it, did, it didn't deliver. It needed to be long. It should have been longer. Um. I appreciate that it didn't feel like it had any fluff. Um, if but, if they would have made it longer for the sake of actually adding to the story and it being worth it, then yes, I totally agree with you. But if they would have just added stuff to make it longer for the sake of making it longer, I disagree. Yeah. Well, so I don't want to talk go. about the order. But don't pre-order. Just wait. And you, everyone has their trusting sources, whether you think we have something of value to say. But you guys are fucking nuts, <laughs> or someone else, then you know. Wait for that. We don't. You don't need to own the game on day one. Usually, the servers don't fucking work. Half the time, it needs a day one patch, and or it's broken nowadays. It's like a freaking reality that we live in. So, you know, but it also gonna, it ain't gonna hurt to wait a day or two. I don't blame you if you pre-order and get a discount. Like, to be quite honest, I pre-ordered. Titanfall 2, because I know I like the past one. I like the studio. I'm pretty sure it's not going to be a steaming pile of shit. And I also pre-ordered it because I got it cheaper than waiting for it to come out. Because when it comes out, well, maybe in a couple weeks to a month, it'll be on sale. But in this instance, I'm going to save money up right up front, right? Also, we also happen to know some people that we trust that have managed to review the game. And they absolutely loved it and gave it 5 out of 5 stars. Mm-hmm. Not so that YouTuber. right there, for <laughs> for me, is a huge thing. Somebody that I respect and I've been reading reviews from for most of my life at this point, <laughs> yeah. reviewed the game and said that he loved it, and he had great things to say about the first one as well, and I know his tastes in games, and sometimes, depending on the type of game it is, they line up very closely with my own, mm -hmm. and in this exactly. case he felt pretty much the same way I did about the original. And he's saying that this is now amazing and awesome. And if you liked that, then you'll probably love this because it's that plus a lot more, uh, you know, then obviously pre-order at your own risk. And, um, and yeah, like I said, this is the reality we live in. You just got to know and trust your source. I just feel like at this day and age with digital downloads and things like that, do we need to be pre-ordering? Not really. Uh, you know, obviously, yeah, you can't return that. Time, if you buy it digitally, you're stuck. <laughs> well, and there was a time. Well, no, uh, actually, you can return it on Origin. You have, I think it's, you, there's a return policy on Origin. But there was a time when a game would come out and you would have to go to the store and purchase it. And there was a very real chance that they might not have enough copies and you would get screwed. Yeah, back in and, the cartridge days, that's true. Because there was and, actual manufacturing limits or shortages on memory. Yeah. Um, you know, because Street Fighter 2 on Super Nintendo was using all the memory chips. So <laughs> they made so many of that. And then there was a shortage on other games as a result. And it's like, okay, well, if I don't buy this right away, I'm probably not going to get it. Or I'm so, going to get it at inflated prices. If you had to, or you wanted the game, and you wanted to make sure you had a copy, then yes, you needed to pre-order. But I feel like nowadays, with digital copies on every platform, 
do you really need to pre-order anymore? I'm going to buy it digitally on my PC, which means that when the game comes out, I can just buy it anyways yeah, if it's, it's a, good. Yeah, it's immediately <laughs> available. so you can Exactly, work. and I don't have to worry about them running out of keys. I guess it's a little harder for people that are in more remote places that need to get games shipped to them. But, okay, enough of that. I had enough of that topic. It sucks. <laughs> it's stupid. I will give your game pause reviews. $10,000. Uh, uh, yeah. 11000 So I can give some money to Dane. Oh, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> so Microsoft had some big crazy thing today. I did not watch any of this. I just saw some of the stuff. I didn't get a chance out, so. to watch it either because oh, okay. some of us have to actually work. Well, then why did you freaking link all this crap in here if you didn't watch Cause it? Because it's cool, man. Do you know all the stories? I do. Okay. Then talk. Because I'm a giant tech nerd. So Microsoft held their big annual tech thing. What do uh, they call it? Th- I'm trying to remember what they called it. I don't remember. Microsoft tech event. Done. <laughs> <laughs> They hey, everybody announced come out to the Microsoft new VR tech, headsets today for Windows 10. Te- the Microsoft Tech event. Just yep. come on out. Come on down to the Microsoft Tech event. So they announced new VR headsets for Windows 10 starting at $299. American. Yes. It will also include inside-out tracking sensors, obviating the need for external cameras or laser systems like those on the current Oculus or HTC Vive. Mm. Currently, HP, Dell, Lenovo, Asus, and Acer are all listed as partners. This looks to be kind of similar to what we saw from Oculus with their prototype that they showed off at their event, where they were showing off their wireless one. This one does not appear to be wireless. There does appear to be some cables involved still. Form factor looks very similar to PlayStation. Yeah, it It really does. I think they realized that the PlayStation VR headset was definitely the most comfortable. Getting the weight off your face and putting it on your forehead and back your noggin is kind of the way to go. Absolutely. This is 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 a ways off still, I think. Um, They didn't announce games. They didn't announce anything like that yet. Availability, nothing. No. They essentially just announced price. So they're aiming for two ninety nine, and they announced partners. So obviously, gathering from this, it's going to include some. There's going to be a range, and obviously, with the variety of partners building these things, we're going to see, you know, various. I'm sure that they're they're building the the hardware and the technology and the software side. And I think their hard their hardware partners are obviously going to be manufacturing them and changing various things to suit their needs. Well, so more production of VR headsets and lower costs to make this more mainstream. Hey, I'm all for it because it'll just result in better experiences and games for that's every, for everyone. Pretty much my thoughts on it. As and well. I assume this is the most likely. This is going to be the actual device that's going to be compatible to Scorpio next year. That's, that's probably that's probably, probably when I was thinking. That's probably when that will get released, guaranteed. Now that I think of it, it that's, would make sense. Yeah, like why would, would we you sit on the Scorpio and, as well as yeah, Windows Ten PCs? Why, why, and why would you sell make the them Oculus? compatible? Yeah, no, oh, that makes absolute sense right now. Yeah. So that I, someone write it down. We'll take a bet for <laughs> for a cheeseburger or something. Heard it here first. Yeah, that's. Uh, um, at the same event, they also announced a new Surface Book. It's yeah, more no. or less same form factor. It looks identical to the old the one. Surface Book. Yeah, yeah, it does look identical. Yep. But now with hour a battery 16 life. hour battery Oof. life. Holy crap. Man, they're expensive. Jesus Christ. Yeah, they're not cheap. I would not buy one of these for that much money. I'm sorry. $23.99. $2,399. That's American. Ugh. They go up to thirty three hundred dollars American. Christ. I'd rather buy a blade and a core. You you got to remember though. This also well, those don't have touch screens. This does, yeah. The the blade does. It does. Bl- yeah, it does. Oh, okay. Never mind. I'm misinformed. Uh, uh, these are now coming with an NVIDIA GeForce GTX nine sixty five M, which is a bit strange to me as we were talking about before the podcast, why they didn't go with the Pascal chips, but I gather 
that probably has to do with this was in development before Nvidia announced Pascal. I don't I don't know. You'd yeah. think that they would have talked about that and went, "Hey, we got these really awesome Pascal chips that are super fast and use way less like battery and they're great." And I don't know. So Jeez. new Surface Book, slightly heavier due to the bigger battery. Uh also I, I don't think yeah, it looks like they've knocked the bottom, which was the 128 gig Surface Book off, and they've now just have a 256 gig, 512 gig, and one terabyte. So, and obviously the new, the bottom is now got the new GeForce 90, 965M in it, so... So if you're in the market for a new Surface Book, that'll be a thing that is happening. They are going to be released November 10th. The so I think the really cool thing that came out of this event was the this next thing, the Microsoft Surface Studio. Thing is really cool. 28 inch monitor, basically with a built-in PC touchscreen. Was it pen interface? Yep. Some really fancy swivel mount. So. Basically, this is right up the alley for designers, animators, drawers, anyone that uses those Wacom Syntec monitors. Oh, yeah. Basically, video game development. Video game uh, development, graphic design, yeah. artists. 3D this could be huge for them. This thing looks oh, yeah. fucking cool. It's so expensive, though. Holy crap. Oh, it is. It is also very powerful, though. They've They've done a phenomenal job. So this thing, it's got an i7 in it. Uh, the bottom version comes with a GeForce 965M in it, but the top one has a GeForce GTX 980M in it, which is pretty impressive. They're, these are not video game machines. These are definitely designed for creators. Work. Yeah, ab- absolutely. They're designed for creators. The touchscreen and or has freaking people who want a really cool looking PC in there swanky apartment in new york city oh yeah you're talking about a 28 inch screen digital output or the display has got 13.5 million pixels yeah it's- which is actually 63 percent more than a 4k tv which is incredible that's just the i guess it's the dpi or the dot pitch or whatever the, the dpi yeah so it it's phenomenal 40, so the re- the resolution is 4500 by 3000 which is not which is a- it's not 4K because this thing is three by two aspect. It is yep. 4K, but it's not 4K because it's not a 16 by nine. It's uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's a three, three by two, two aspect. It's your classic, like, but it's got 192 pixels per inch. Jesus, I think that's, like, that's pretty be incredible a pretty for a monitor. Screen. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so it's it's got some some power inside. The swivel mount that it's got is incredible. It allows it to drop down onto the desk, and you can use it like a tablet, it's which like is amazing. Freaking pencil thick, and that's the computer in there. Jesus, yeah, that's crazy. Oh, oh it's beautiful. Yeah, this thing it's looks beautiful. Awesome. This is like basically the Windows version of the iMac, or are they even called iMacs anymore? Yep, they're still iMacs. But the thing with this is the difference between it and an iMac is that they're actually putting decent graphics hardware in it. Yeah, and it's which is pretty screen. sweet. Yes, exactly. Huh. They also announced a really win, interesting lottery, accessory. This would be kind of cool. Called the Surface Dial. Now I'm not really sure how this thing works exactly, but it's it's like a device that you place on directly on the screen, and it allows you to you can spin it and click it. And it allows you to yeah, do various things depending it on... It brings up like a color wheel and like tools for the pen. Yeah, and you can spin and adjust and change color and pen and uh, various things like that. So I'd be kind of curious to see, depending on obviously your industry and stuff, that could be super cool. Probably expensive, but hey man, if it makes your job easier, then I'm all for it. Mm-hmm. So uh, it's a 10-point multi-touch... It's you can you can get it with an i5 or a Core i7, uh, starting with eight gigs of RAM, sixteen, or they'll even make you one with a thirty-two gigs of RAM. So I mean, as you can imagine, they, they, these are not cheap. No, they not. they it's start at around place. three thousand dollars American, and they go all the way up to a little over four thousand dollars American. Oof. So, 
But you also got to remember, you're talking about one of this is some somebody put it into perspective. Technology. Somebody put it into perspective that if you were to buy the 27 inch Wacom, I think it's the Cintiq yeah, monitor those are like slash tablet, hundred dollars or something. Like exactly, twenty five hundred dollars by Plus, itself. You still need a tower to drive that. Exactly. This is just basically a fancy touchpad. Well, pretty with much a, with a monitor built in. With one of the best monitors you can buy. Yeah, this thing looks beautiful. Wow, man! If yeah. I get some, if I get a lot of extra money, who knows? No, I don't really. Yeah, have it, it. It's it, a fucking for me. This is a cool, beautiful looking PC, but it's just a waste of money because I would not take advantage of any of those features. Oh yeah, they went like as funny as this sounds. They went full Apple on this thinnest LCD monitor ever built. Yeah, the design of it is really. The crazy. design is absolutely beautiful. They went all over showing this thing off. Forged aluminum enclosures. The thing is only twelve point five millimeters thick. Touchscreen. It's the densest display in a in a PC. It's. It's a beautiful piece of kit. There's no doubt about it. Yeah. If you want to see it, there'll be a link in the show notes, and uh, it'll be on the Facebook page. Yeah. Um, Sony announces uh, officially licensed uh, PS4 controllers. I guess these... Pro did, controllers, my friend. I guess these did not exist before. These things are fucking atrocious. <laughs> For a lack of a better word. They look fucking terrible. I they... imagine they look like they would just hurt my hands. <laughs> the top one looks like the freaking controller from, oh, what's that stupid fucking streaming thing? I don't know. The one that they gave away at PAX that one year we went there. I don't know. The one that went out of business. It was the little micro console with the controller. It was all online streaming. Oh, um, on live? On live, that looks like the razor. There's a razor controller here for PS4. That looks like the on live controller. That looks exactly like it. That thing if was you, terrible. It's it's actually funny if you click on the uh, link to the razor, you get a much better idea, and it looks a lot more comfortable when you actually look at the controller Still, on their website. Ugh. These are ugly. they're ugly. These they're are not ugly. pretty. No, they're ugly. This is this is all about them trying to combat the. The Microsoft Elite controller. Oh, man, they freaking failed here. These things are obviously third party. I haven't held one, so I can't talk. Oh, I'm gonna talk. It's all about they're fucking ugly. It's oh my all God. about the various. It's all about customization with these. Is the thing. <laughs> I'm all about looks. I'm freaking. Sh- I'm fucking. Sh- I'm shallow hell on this one. I'm sorry. I, I they can't. got shortcut buttons on the back, just like the Xbox. <sighs> yeah, the little fucking toggles on the back. It's well, got weight compartments. Yeah, I mean, they, they, these things are packing a lot of extra weight. It's it's a. They're totally. Crap. I will never buy one. I don't care. But <laughs> I'm totally being an asshole. There. I don't know if they're good or not. But oh my god, just from looking at these pictures, I obviously have to touch these. But oh my god, they look. Ter- I just wouldn't want to own them because the way they look. You're such a design whore. I am a design whore. <laughs> you just come talk. We just come off a story talking about the most beautiful PC we've ever seen. It's and true. then these janky, like sharp edge, weird looking batarang kind of funky controllers. With ugly color schemes and... Strangely enough, I feel like if I was to actually put my hands on them, they're probably somewhat comfortable. Yeah, probably. But... But... I just... I'm happy with my DualShock 4. So these are officially licensed controllers. Sony has actually officially licensed them. Yeah, Sony made them pay. Yeah. Release that shit on our system, you gotta pay us. That crap's ugly. (laughs) I'm being overdramatic, obviously, but... You are. These are not for me. They're not for me either. They're for the same types of people that want to buy an Xbox Elite controller with all the customization that goes along with it. Yeah, but these don't even look like they compete with that. Elite controller is beautiful. And it has form and function. I don't know. These... They could come up with anything better. Seriously. Sorry. I would would expect... I'm just reading the stories. I would expect something just as good as the Elite. No prices have been released... On either one of them yet. Who knows when they'll actually come out. 
these things have a tendency to get announced and then three or four or five months later, who knows? Um, <sighs> one of the controllers is, is compatible with PC as well. So that's kind of interesting. If you're really jonesing for a PC controller, that's, I don't know, adjustable, I guess is the big thing here. So anyways, cool. Those are a thing that happened. Cool. Not cool. Yeah. <laughs> I'm an asshole. Sorry. Rick hates the designs. Yeah. I'm, I'm neither here nor there. I'm a design whore. I'm all, to, I'm all about. To, I'm all about. I need looks. to feel them. I need to feel them. I'm all about look, flash over substance. Big old fake. T- I mean, what? <laughs> um. But that being said, I think that's it for news. I think we can move into our free for all section. I think we can. Um. I heard somebody did a dumb, dumb thing. Yeah, I did a really dumb thing today. I did a really, really dumb, dumb, dumb thing today. I ordered so a, why? <laughs> I ordered a 1080. Okay. Uh, why? Because I'm a fucking idiot. And like, was have, it on sale? Today? It was on sale. I wouldn't For say it. For 50 bucks? No, off. it was more than that. It okay. was it was like a hundred bucks off, so um, definitely sounds- cheaper than as if I bought it at launch. Also, this is an overclock card or a card that is capable of pretty decent overclocking, from what I read. So more powerful than a 1080 Founders Edition. Um, it's the ASUS uh, Republic of Gamers Styrix uh, 1080 that I got. Um, I had been working a lot of overtime at work, so that. My paycheck was pretty freaking nice, and <laughs> I somehow convinced my wife that uh, that was a it, good idea. No, well, I get my budget, and I told her, "I'm like, hey, I got a lot of debt from from PAX from buying a 4K TV recently because <laughs> I haven't already spent enough freaking money <laughs> buying a PlayStation right. VR." Uh huh. And my work is I had a call on overtime and overtime at my work is very lucrative so i basically been on overtime for the whole month of october right and i'm like okay well you know what i'm gonna pay off my debt and then it's like um i don't want all the extra money but can we do like a 60 40 split like (laughs) you get 60 and i get 40 like 60 goes to us towards our expenses our vacation or whatever the hell she wants to put it towards you know right and she's like she kind of like gave me this look and she's like I guess. She's like, yeah, that's fine. Because it's just money we wouldn't have otherwise. And I'm only working a couple extra days, a couple hours at work. Like, I'm getting home at 6 o'clock compared to 4 o'clock. It's not, like, really a big deal. Right. So, it's not really impacting her too much. So, she's cool with it. And we're going on vacation next year. So, it also gives us some extra money for that. And at the same time, I get to benefit, too, for working a little bit longer. So, yeah, I bought a 1080. Now, how did I get to this spot well, yeah, I'm friend. surprised you bought a 1080 when you're still running on a 1080p monitor that's 25 okay. years old. There's, there's a couple things. 25 years old. <laughs> okay, it's, maybe not that old, but it's, it's like, pretty old. Yeah, it is pretty old. So, and I understand I, that you tried to replace your monitor, but it ended up in nothing but tears. Yeah. So, this is why I was going to go buy an Xbox One S. I was doing classic Rico. Do, 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 do. How can I get an Xbox One S without spending any money? Um, the Battlefield bundle looks pretty good because I don't really care if I play that on PC or console. And I want kind of want an Xbox One S because I have a 4K TV. I can right. take advantage of that. And then I started going, yeah, well, I can sell my old Xbox, probably get 200 bucks for it. And, you know, okay, in the end, I might pay $200 to upgrade to the new console. And now I'm like, you know what? But then I'm going to want a Scorpio next year. So that's kind of like a dumb stopgap because I already have an Xbox One S. And I'm like, you know, that's $400 that I could be putting towards a video card. And then, right. I, then I went down the rabbit hill of 4K and HDR. And the 1080s, <laughs> the 10 series, do HDR. PCs do do HDR. Now there's yes. not very many monitors that support it. Was, if if that's any, that's where I was going to get to. If, now you just need a monitor to support it. I have a 55 inch 4K HDR monitor in my house. 
I wouldn't call it a monitor. It's definitely a TV, but it's a fucking TV. Whatever but helps you sleep at night. It's 120 hertz, 4K resolution, beautiful TV. Like this is how in love I am with my TV. I'm like, you know what? I can take advantage of that 1080 now. And then when I'm not playing on the TV, well, god damn it, every game, regardless, even at 4K, I was looking at a lot of benchmarks. Most games at 4K on the 1080 run above 30 frames a second, if not above 60. And that would just be beautiful on that TV. And or every single game from here on out for the next few years is going to be fucking ultra settings. (laughs) So, yeah, and I had extra money. And I taught myself how to buy an Xbox One S. So that's how we got there. (laughs) Long story short. So when do you get it? I don't know. I just ordered it today, so... Oh, okay. So you're was, hoping to get it by next week sometime? Yeah, I was really hope. Well, I hope it's here by the before the weekend, because I really want Titanfall two to be the first thing I play on it. Ooh, because I have been noticing that I have gone to that point and I've mentioned it. I'm turning stuff down on some games. Oh, you know, which games like, did you have to turn something down on? Well, not like not like Overwatch. But yeah, like no kidding. you know, like. I don't get perfect 60 all the time and di- division. So a couple, I turn shadows and stuff, stuff that's not really important off, but yeah, I don't want to turn nothing off. I want to turn everything the fuck on <laughs> and up, up to the sky. Oh boy. I know I'm an idiot. So yeah, that's that. <laughs> <laughs> so what are you going to do with your 780? Uh, I'm probably going to throw it into the podcast machine. <laughs> Could be the most powerful podcast machine on the block. Yeah, that's a thing. Yeah, fair enough. It's downstairs, and I could hook it up to my projector, which is only 1080p. So, hey, yep. it's perfect. Hey, there you go. So, it still has a life to live. Excellent. And I have two high-end gaming PCs. Look at me, spoiled brat. <laughs> um, <laughs> do you do you watch Walking Dead? Nope. Okay. Not um, even a little bit. I wanted to talk about the season opener. Um, I heard it was crazy. That's word on the street. If you haven't watched it yet, maybe fast forward like five minutes. This is going to be the last. This show is going to be done after I'm done talking about this. So if if you don't want to hear anything about The Walking Dead season opener, um, there's some spoilers. No spoilers if you've read the comic books currently and past the timeline of the TV show. So you already know what happened. But anyway. Okay. You're, we're <laughs> getting... This is Lost Warning. Spoiler Zone. Walking Dead. Okay. Holy fuck. That was excruciating. I was physically and mentally like molested. The level of violence in this... This show is fucking violent. Man, I've dropped a lot of F-bombs and stuff, so sorry anyone who has kids listening. Earmuffs. Um, <laughs> there's a lot of violence. And not and just bloody, gruesome, heartless violence. Like, brutal violence. Isn't it a show about zombies? I know. This show I is mean, gross. Like, there's decapitations. supposed there's, to be? Yeah, but it's like, oh, you got stabbed in the head, cut to something else. Oh, you got your head chopped off, cut to something else. This was, like, honed in, focused on the violence. And it wasn't against zombies. It was against major characters. So it was people you've watched for years now have met their end and I'm not going to say who but like a couple major characters kick the bucket and in a very very violent and excruciating just I don't it doesn't make sense this show is so freaking violent and gory that this level I guess it was because it was against but humans have been mutilated and brutalized throughout the I don't know what it was about this episode. It was really, really hard to like watch and stomach. I this episode was a fantastic episode and a f- terrible episode. It hit so many things, like so many nails right on the head and hard. Uh, 
What I find interesting about what you just said, mm-hmm. and and because I know the show airs on on AMC, I find it very interesting that they will show that level of violence with no nudity. Oh yeah, yeah, titties. The nudity on AMC you'll never see. Nudity, but they will show violence almost to the same level as Game of Thrones, maybe even more. No, it's this is totally fine. This show is beyond Game of Thrones violence. This show. This is almost like freaking torture porn violence. And it's not like there hasn't been disgusting, gory things in this series before, but whatever it was in this episode was... It must have been because it was against characters we knew and loved that it was... That's what made it especially excruciating. It was amazing. It Being someone who's watched the series from the start, it was, like I said, an amazing and a painful episode to watch. I've never, I don't think I've ever, like, I've been excited uh, in shows where there's been violence against someone that's like, yeah, that motherfucker had it coming. Yeah, you you, you died. And, but it's like the Joffrey in Game of Thrones. Yeah, but it's not like (laughs) this disgusting, brutal, like, ugh gritty aggressive violence of someone dying it it was very hard to watch and like the whole, after that episode i'm like whole i like man i just went through the ringer like literally i felt like i a good friend of mine died i had a funeral that i was going to be going to tomorrow now like i feel like fucking shit like, <laughs> it was just i've never had something really affect it was it was brutal and it was amazing, and it was terrible, all at the same. It was, I don't even know how to categorize. I've never been so affected by a piece of media. And I guess that is to say the quality of, it was either really good or really bad. I don't know. Cause I've, <laughs> but I've, it had to have been good because I felt so much. Do you know what I mean? Right. So it if, was it was, good, if it was if it was bad, what you were watching it was bad. If it was bad, I wouldn't have felt anything. I would have been like, "Oh, this is stupid." They went over the board like shark they jumped the shark. And right. you would say in terms of violence, they jumped the shark, but it was just it's crazy. It was crazy episode. Um anyone who's watched it probably feels the same way or maybe you're a robot and maybe it doesn't affect but for whatever reason it really affected me. And it's funny because I used to listen to a podcast, um, the PlayStation Blogcast. I don't listen anymore. I can't stand it, but um, it's the basically the official PlayStation podcast. Okay. And one yeah. of the hosts on there, uh, he read the books, and he's not a huge fan of the show. Right. And the content of this open seasoner is basically uh, episode 100 or comic 100 or book 100. Issue 100. Hmm, okay. And he right, said... so that's about where they're at. And a few years... This was probably two years ago or three years ago on that podcast when I used to listen to it. He was like, I'm fucking done. He's like, I'm done with fucking Walking Dead. This is bullshit. He was so angry, but he didn't say what he was angry about. This is what he was angry about. Oh. <laughs> like, I don't know if it was the turn of the violence or just that he was upset that the characters he liked died in such a grotesque way or a brutal Hmm, visceral way so it's really funny that he had like a very pronounced reaction to just the comic of this incident and this introduction of this new basically the new villain that's going to drive the series forward for this season and maybe beyond he's a major this this is the introduction of basically negan where we met him at the end of the last season and basically now it's like we're seeing how brutal this guy is um, he's a major character in the Walking Dead universe. So yeah, it's crazy. And now I understand why he was so angry and upset. It was like reading the Red Wedding in Game of Thrones. Like this is the type of episode that this was in terms of wow. scale or epic, like just brutal event, game changing event. Anyway, I thought I'd give my two cents. Well, there you go. It was crazy. Walking it was, Dead it was big freaking, deal. It was crazy. I. Like I said, I'd heard uh, it was kind of everything that everybody was talking about. It definitely really reminded me of why I really was enjoying Fear of the Walking Dead, but the last few episodes, 
I was kind of losing it with that show. I'm just like, oh man, this is. It started out really good, and now I'm just like, nah, it's not as good as the other one, as actual proper <laughs> Walking Dead. But anyway, um, with that, my friends, I'm going to say we have a show. Episode 80 is written to the hard drives and the gigabits and the internet. Um, you can follow me on Twitter at Rick F, no K, R I C F. You can always hit me up on Twitter at D A Y N E C O D Y at Dane Cody. Make sure to like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, share our podcast with your friends, rate us on iTunes. Oh my God, please rate us on iTunes. That helps us get more listeners. Um, actually, these episodes are on YouTube as well. If you but if you're listening to this, you probably subscribe on your podcast player of choice. Uh, but yeah, if you haven't subscribed to our YouTube channel and uh, put some likes up there, comments, whatever, um, hit us up on email or on the Twitterverse. And uh, next week, I swear, I promise, I will not forget to put up questions and we'll get some uh, get some questions maybe in an episode. We haven't done that in a while. It'll be fun to hear oh, yeah. from everyone making fun of our VR reactions, maybe what you think about the Switch and or the fact that I'm an idiot spending a bunch of money on a 1080. <laughs> as always uh, we appreciate you listening and have a great weekend Nintendo Switch peace peace